In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create an illustration of a 3D model in Corel Designer. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. I have Corel Designer open, and I want to import a SolidWorks 3D model. I'll choose File, 3D Import, which opens XVL Studio 3D CAD Corel Edition. To see what types of 3D files I can open, I'll choose File Open and look at the available file types. The formats without plus signs can be opened with XVL Studio Corel Edition, which is included in Corel Draw Technical Suite, or with XVL Studio 3D CAD Corel Edition, which can be purchased as an add-on program. The formats with plus signs can only be opened with the add-on XVL Studio 3D CAD Corel Edition. If you have a file with a format that cannot be opened in the Corel version, you can convert it into an exchange format such as IGIS, which can then be opened in the Corel version. SolidWorks files can be opened in this version, and I'll choose the Break Assembly Corel model. Clicking the Options button opens a window with options to filter the CAD data to import. I'll leave the defaults and import the model. After a few seconds, the model is imported. With the Examine tool active by default, I can left click and drag to rotate the model, zoom in and out with the scroll wheel, and press and hold the middle mouse button to pan. I can also display orthographic views by clicking front, back, right, etc., and I'll return to isometric view. On the left, the assembly tree displays the structure of the assembly, subassemblies, and parts. Selecting an object in the tree highlights it in the workspace, and after activating the Select Part tool, selecting an object in the workspace highlights it in the assembly tree. The green caliper is at the bottom of the model, but I want it shown at the top. So I'll first select everything by pressing Ctrl A, then click the Move Part icon. The move mode is simple, and part selection is disabled so that the move will be performed on the parts that are already selected. I'll enter a 180 degree rotation about the Y axis and click Execute, then Close. I want to preserve this position, so I'll take a snapshot by clicking the camera icon in the Structure panel. Now, if I move or rotate the object, I can double click Snapshot 1 to return to the position I just saved. Now I'll set up the model the way I want it to appear in Corel Designer as an exploded view. At the top of the assembly tree, I'll uncheck Wheel 15 Assembly 1 to hide it and click Fit Selection to zoom the visible parts to fit the workspace. I'll click Select Part again and Shift Select the six bolts at the top of the caliper assembly. To bring back the Move Part window, I'll press the Ctrl M shortcut. Rather than specify a direction and distance, I can simply click and drag along the x-axis to move the bolts away from the assembly. While Move Parts is still open, I'll select the front half of the caliper and move this part out in the x-direction as well. I could continue to separate parts this way, but I'll close the Move Part window. Before sending to Designer, I want to set conversion options for the parts. Specifically, I want the entire model to appear in thick and thin lines, with the caliper front filled with its original green color to make it stand out. I'll select and right-click the front part of the caliper and choose Properties, and in the Shell Display tab I'll check Apply Shading to Hidden Line Images, click Set, and Close. Now I'll click Send to Designer, set the illustration frame size to 250 by 250 millimeters and drag and zoom so that the parts fit entirely inside the frame. In the Send to Designer window, the add-on XVL Studio 3D CAD Corel Edition has enhanced export options on the Details tab, which are not available in XVL Studio Corel Edition that's included in CorelDRAW Technical Suite. In the Style 1 tab, I can set the thick and thin line properties. The thick silhouette line and independent edge are both 0.6 millimeters to make their thickness easier to see, and the thin concave and convex edges are 0.2 millimeters. Extraction limit sets the level of line detail, and the effect of these values depends on the geometry. I'll set both to 175. 
In the Style 2 tab, I can set the options for the filled caliper. I'll check Outline and check Outline Each Part and Color Parts SVG Only. Both targets will use Shell Display Settings. My settings are complete, so I'll click Send. This adds a new snapshot that represents my designer import, which I could return to in XVL Studio if I want to change the import contents or settings. After a few seconds of processing, I return to Corel Designer, where I'll accept the default import settings. I can click and drag to place the imported illustration, or press Enter to center it on the page. In the Objects Docker, I can expand the groups to see how each assembly, subassembly, and part was converted to a group of curves. The caliper curves are filled, and all curves have thick or thin line widths. And now I can use the tools in Designer to add more details, such as callouts, text objects, or any other changes to the illustration. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating an illustration of a 3D model in Corel Designer. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.